Hello and welcome to Ula Tilly Readings. My name is Lenore and tonight I'm going to be reading your tea leaves. This is a horoscope for Virgo. If Virgo is your solar, lunar, ascendant slash rising sign, then this is a message for you. All right, let's get started. And so this is a bonus reading for Virgo. And we have the Queen of Cups. Okay, and let's go ahead and see what these tea leaves have to say tonight. And so if you have not subscribed yet, look at all this fuzz on there. I can see it in the monitor. <laughs> if you have, I'm wearing my husband's sweater. <laughs> if you watch Dove and Serpent Tarot, um, you might recognize one of his I want one of his Mr. Rogers sweaters. Um, <laughs> but anyhow, yes, uh, if you haven't subscribed, please think about doing that. You can hit the little bell. It'll let you know when the next readings are coming out. It's free to subscribe. All right, let's see. Immediately I see a Z. We have a Z right up here. Okay. Okay, and it looks like we have a cat here with a long shadow behind it. So I feel like this is a time where you might kind of be, you know, taking some time for yourself. Um, I feel like there's this real kind of independent, maybe a little bit it's lonely, but not really, al like alone, yes but not really alone among others, feeling a bit lonely. Um, but I don't think for any certain person, I feel like this is kind of just, um, almost a, a, uh, you know, like a existential loneliness. And, um, and I don't feel like it's necessarily a bad thing. Here's the thing about Virgos and I am a Virgo myself. Um, I will add <laughs> is that, um, you know, we just have this kind of, well, we're quite mercurial. We, you know, we're very related to, uh, mercury. Um, we can be very in tune with others and part of the, the collective and really like tuned in and activated. Now we also dwell in this kind of melancholy place. Not necessarily melancholy here, but um, this real distinct understanding, awareness of our um, aloneness, our, our um, singular being in this great universe. Now, on the flip side, we also feel quite interconnected with all things, right? So I think there's kind of this vacillation sometimes between the two, and... I feel that you're kind of in this mode of, yeah, wanting to kind of be alone, do your own thing. Um, maybe wanting to feel a little bit lonely. I'll tell you what, I, uh, I yearn for a time to be lonely. <laughs> I mean, I'm surrounded by my family, which I love. Um, but you know, I am a solitary person. So sometimes, you know, I really wish that I could just be in that state of absolute loneliness. Um, it feels refreshing for the Virgo. It's grounding, right? It gets you real low to the ground. And, um, and I feel like that's a place where we can really recharge. So I feel, yeah, there is kind of this intentional, solitary, independent time time going on for you. This is a cycle, um, that is most necessary. Okay. Uh, above I see it's a, it, to me, it's like the chaos of anxiety, right? Kind of going, it's like a thought bubble off of the, the, uh, cat we have down here. 
And so I feel like, yeah, there's been this real uh, period of a lot happening, right? So many things, busy, busy, busy. And as stuff slows down just a little bit, I feel it does. It gives you this little moment, this brief reprieve, brief reprieve. Yes, <laughs> that was hard to say together. Brief reprieve uh, to allow yourself some time to just kind of let some of those anxieties melt away. Just let them go. Let them like little beads of water going right down the side of like, I don't know, the car, right? Just, just going down the window, just letting them go. And, um, and I, and I do, I, you know, I think that this is, um, it's often a time when you come up with your best ideas. Absolutely. Um, it's a time when, yeah, there's nobody kind of interrupting you. And so, um, it feels, it feels most welcome. Definitely. Now we have what looks like kite. K-I-T-E. Kite. So maybe you are somebody who likes to fly kites. Maybe this is something that you used to do when you were a kid. Maybe it is something that you have thought about doing now. Now the kite is also something as symbolically to me, it is really this idea of letting all of your, your troubles and your worries just kind of float away for a little while. Getting into a serene, almost meditative place, just letting all of those feelings and thoughts kind of, you know, soar above you. And so, um, you know, I do, I think that this is all tied together this time where it's kind of like, I've been doing a lot and I probably have a lot more coming up, but here I have a few days, maybe a week or two to kind of, um, unwind myself. Maybe I have a little time to go wandering by myself. Maybe I can read a book or, um, you know, even just sit, have tea in the afternoon, a little bit of sweet tea. Ooh, I, I have this beautiful mixture of, it's a peach tea, cold brew, cold brew peach tea with some sweet tea, non-sugar sweet tea. And um, it's so good. I'm, I had some a few weeks ago and then it got cold again. The minute it's back over like 75 degrees steadily, we are definitely getting back into the, the tea around here, the iced tea. But yeah, doesn't that sound nice? Just kind of sitting by yourself, being in your own little world, drinking some nice tea, taking it easy, and um, seeing, seeing what comes of that. Okay, let's see here. Now, we have a person up here who has a bird, it looks like, some kind of bird. This person has a four above their head, right there. I almost wonder if that's maybe a life path number because it is in this metaphysical zone on the rim. Now beneath, we have a group of people who look like they're kind of um, pulling and dancing and, and in, a, in a bit of a, a squabble down there. Um, and I feel like this, this is, I feel like this is family maybe, or friends or people at work into the dramas, right? This time of year, especially if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, um, it's getting warm. People just start acting up. <laughs> when it gets warm, it's just something about it. Maybe because we're outside more, we're around other people more often, 
Um, the heat just gets to people. Whatever it is. It seems to be that there's just a lot of dramatics happening. I can just picture kind of voices raised and people kind of um, accusing each other of things. And I don't, you know, just it, but it's needlessly, it's needlessly done. It doesn't make any sense. Like, what are these things that they're fighting over? They have nothing to do with anything, really. And... Um, and so I feel you up here kind of in your own world, right? As we talked about now we have the birds. So I feel like you are really communing with, uh, the divine. Okay. I feel that this is a time that's quite psychic for you. It is a time that you are really receiving some very clear messages and, um, and I don't, it could be through dreams, but I feel like this is even more in the waking world. Like you're seeing a lot of synchronicities, repeating numbers, repeating, repeating phrases, um, some kind of, I was going to say a planet. That's what first came to my mind. A planet, maybe Venus is what I was thinking, but maybe Jupiter And we have little TT meowing away. She's fine, I know. Sometimes you guys hear her. She's out in the hallway. She can't get into the office. She's fine. She's fed. She has lots of, lots of, lots of attention. We even have house guests right now who have also been giving her attention. They These cats don't go um, a few minutes, it seems, without somebody hanging out with them and petting them. So they're perfectly fine. I just have not been letting her in. Um, I miss her on the readings as well, but it just is so chaotic, especially because I just, I'm still getting it. I still have boxes. If you could see behind me, there's still boxes and stuff. And um, I haven't had time because I've been sick to get the studio fully set up, but um, she will return at some point, I'm sure. Um, just not yet. And I had to have a drink before I coughed. Okay, so. <coughs> <coughs> nope, it came anyways. <coughs> oh my goodness. Okay, sorry about that. It just absolutely, I, it's at the end of it, but I've been doing yard work too. So I just aggravated this cough that I still kind of is lingering from having the flu. So also we have fish. We have, uh, it, now this was a Z, but then on this side it looks like a butterfly. We also have, it looks like, oh, maybe a zero and an eight. Right here's one zero eight. Okay, 108. Um, the butterfly, yeah, evolution of self, um, metamorphosis, money coming in. Okay, we have money coming in. Um, but I feel like it's just really, it seems to me there is just this kind of renewed interest in and then insert whatever it is because we have all of this squabbling going on. Not interesting to you, okay? Not getting involved, not getting to just pulled into the crowd a bit. You're off doing your own thing. You're just kind of living your life, doing your spiritual work, taking time for yourself, um, working on those interior matters, the, the ordeals of, of your individuation, okay? Um, the universe is responding, sending you lots of messages, symbols, signs, intuitions. Now, I feel that you have a very distinct pull towards trying something out and i feel like this is something that is going to make you money okay so um you know anything it, it could be anything really whatever it is that you're good at or you've been interested in trying go for it give it a try you know i was just talking to 
um, somebody who does um, entertainment for like parties and events and stuff. And I was just so interested. How do you get into that? You know, and um, and as it is for most businesses, small businesses, it's just kind of like you have a passion for something. You think, yeah, this might be something that I could spend my life doing or at least a good portion of my days doing. And then you kind of, you know, you start to put that together and, you know, try it out, see how it goes. And then, it, you know, you invest more of your time and efforts into it. And hopefully, hopefully you can grow a little career for yourself, a little business for yourself. Well, I feel like this is the beginning of something, right? Some kind of maybe you are making something that you're going to be selling or maybe you are um, starting some kind of food business or um, for in my mind, I was thinking, um, and I think this is because my sister, shout out to my sister Lee. Oh, I shouldn't say her name. I'm not going to say her name. She knows who she is. I always, I... <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to I don't want to give away too many people in our personal life although it's not hard to find them I'm sure online but um yeah my sister's also a Virgo and she goes to festivals and stuff and uh so she's like a big deadhead type of type of lady and um so like maybe like selling stuff at festivals or you know like uh farmers markets and and things like that go for it do the thing it's never going to feel like the exact right time. It never does. But I promise you, if you put your love and your effort into it, it maybe won't make you a ton of money, but it is worth the time that you're putting into it. It's something that doesn't feel like work, right? Um, when you are doing something that you really care about, and yeah, maybe there are parts of it that do, you know, the, the bookkeeping and the behind the scenes. Okay, I get that, definitely. Um, like doing these readings, I feel so happy to do them. It's all of this stuff you don't see. That's a lot of work. <laughs> That's like so much going on. Um, but I do see that fish and it does feel like an abundance of resources. And that's a wonderful thing. Money coming your way. Okay, let's see. We also have, we have some hearts. They're not big though. I think this is just a time of self-love. You know what I'm saying? A lot of, um, you know, paying attention to yourself. Making sure that you're getting what you need. Prioritizing yourself. Now, we have, we have a bird. We have somebody, it looks like, is sewing. And we have a six. I almost feel like this is somebody in your family. Um, somebody who would sew things, maybe fix things, or maybe they were into embroidery. Um... And they're showing me this kind of like blue material. It's like for a dress, I think. They're so proud of it. Like they made their own their own dress or they made like their daughter a dress. And they're showing me the material. Here's the material. Look at this material. Doesn't it feel nice? And it does. And I feel like they even saved up for, for this material. And I feel like there's such a pride in the, the ability to kind of make your own things. And I feel like this is, I almost, is this your mom or grandmother or auntie or somebody? And I feel like it, it, looking back on it now, you think it, you know, there's a sense of, um, how privileged it was to be around somebody who made their own clothes, um, who was so self-sufficient. But I think when you were young, um, it was almost kind of embarrassing or at least like there was a bit of not jealousy, but just wanting, like, why can't I just buy a new dress? I have to, 
you know, wear one that was handmade. And when you're young and you're trying to keep up with like everybody around you, um, you know, that might make sense to you then. But as an older person, as you grow up, you think, wow, this is somebody who spent time to make these beautiful things um, for us to wear so we could have something nice. And maybe there wasn't a lot of money, but they would save up and get the nice material or whatever, you know, material they could get. And this was very special. It just seems like a light blue color. Um, and it just, it feels, I just keep thinking this is like, there's so much, um, it is. And I keep saying pride, but it is like just feeling so good about, I made this. And so, um, there's such a wealth of love in this connection. And I think that this is, maybe they're transitioned already, or maybe they're older and, um, there's, they're just not the same person that, you know, you knew growing up. Maybe it's age or, or a mental, you know, um, a cognitive decline, right? Uh, dementia or something like this. Um, but I just, I, there's such a belovedness and I feel that it's soft. It feels like such a soft thing. Um, and always making sure that you looked very smart, right? Um, put together and and clean and you know uh, I remember my grand my grandmothers were very I had a great grandmother and a grandmother I lived with when I was young um, up until my parents died and um, you know they they uh, are my, my family on that side is Native American and they struggled you know they came um, a long way in their lives to become landowners and, um, briefly, but they were, you know, and they worked really hard for that, but they also knew poverty all too well. And, um, my great grandmother, you know, was very, had quite an impression left on her from the great depression. Right. And also the dust bowl. They were from, they were, they had been, um, our tribe had been moved to Oklahoma, right? Forcibly removed from um, Alabama. And uh, so anyways, the dust will happen. They came, they went up to California. And, um, and I remember, you know, just um, how particular they were about these certain things. Keeping your hands clean. You know, um, wearing clean clothes, making sure that your hair was combed. And I, you know, I grew up in the in the late '80s and '90s, and I was like a, you know, just a wild thing, even as a kid. <laughs> so um, I didn't understand, but now I do. I've internalized some of that stuff. I get it. And because I was, you know, I was so poor during my adult years. Now I have a daughter. And, um, I would do anything to keep her, you know, feeling, um, feeling like nobody's going to make fun of her right now. Um, not to the point where, uh, I'm going to give her anything. She's going to have to understand what it is to, to struggle a little, a little bit, you know, to understand what it is to be humble and, um, frugal and all these things. But, um, yeah, it's, it's funny. Those things get ingrained into you. And so I almost kind of, I'm listening to this and it, it seems familiar. Um, and I think it's a generational thing too. Uh, very much kind of keeping your shoes clean. Now I never had that. They never were worried about my shoes because my shoes were always a disaster. If I ever wore them, <laughs> I was always barefoot. But, um, yeah, so that, that's interesting. Um, so this blue dress and I can just see in the, just 
like feel the fabric and it's so sweet i love that okay so we also have it looks like a ram so we have some kind of aries connection here We have a ram, oh, we have a skull, okay, and we have an eight. This is the skull up here. So the ending of something, something coming to an end here. We have the eight. Also the number eight. We have somebody praying beneath the sun. Drawn to the sun, aren't we, Virgo? I like to sit in the sun. I know I'm not supposed to. I know we're not supposed to be doing that anymore, but I can't help myself. I like to be out in the sun. I wish I could. I wish I was a teenager again. I could just take naps in the sun. Now I, w I feel like I would be miserable, but now this Aries person, who are you? Who are you? What is this ending? So the Aries person I feel is almost like a teacher. You can see here the side profile, hair up in a bun. Now beneath we have the bird again, kind of perched. So this is somebody who is also uh, transitioned, passed away. Um, They left quite an impression on you. I almost wonder if you wanted to be a teacher because of this person. I almost feel like this had something to do with writing or English or, or whatever language you know you were studying. Um, but there seems to be this sense of... Um, almost like showing you books that were outside of the curriculum... Um, things that really changed you. Things that, um, kind of shaped, you know, who you became, um, in, in little ways, not huge ways, but you know, books do, they change us. It's like going, traveling into another world. We can't come back the same. And so, um, yeah, this seems to be coming through and, and, it feels quite beautiful. Um, it looks very kind of beautiful, whimsical, or kind of ornate. Um, this thing coming to an end. Something, something it seems fairly large in your life. I almost think it's... Um, I don't know, maybe something, maybe a job you were doing. I don't know if it was your primary work though, um, but it feels like something, something's coming, coming up and changing your routine. It feels like your routine has changed. So, you know, for a Virgo, you need to really ground yourself, get centered when we have these changes in our schedules. Let yourself have some time to get used to it. Don't doom yourself from the beginning. It always, I don't know. It always kind of sucks, doesn't it? At the beginning, <laughs> oh, I have to do all these things in a different order. It's at a different time of day. Um, it's, it can be quite destabilizing for a Virgo, but you have to give yourself time. Go slow with it. Be kind to yourself. You'll get used to it. It'll work out the way it's supposed to and um, everything will be just fine. That's right, just fine. And so we have the wild, what is it called? The wild offering oracle cards. I should know that. I really <laughs> use them every day. All right, let's see. I'm going to flip on through. We're going to stop where it feels right. Yes, and it says patience. There we go. We need some patience with our schedule cha changing. If you've tried forever to shift a problem, 
there's probably something to learn from embracing it. May I let this be for now. Help me relax and trust every need will be met. Often change soon follows. Yes. All right. All right, Virgo, I want to tell you I love you because I do. And I thank you so much for spending this time with me. It's always such an honor to be able to bring these messages to you. And if you would be so kind as to like the video, it really does help the channel. And if you have not subscribed yet, please think about doing that. It is free to subscribe. And um, what else? If you want to leave a comment, please do. I read them all. You all are the best. I love you. Take care of yourself. We're going to talk in just a couple days. All right. Good night. Good night. Good night.